Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So I have enjoyed my Sunday evening sitting around the campfire with the kids, having some fun with them, enjoying a couple of drinks. I've been uh, working on this uh, bottle of 1910 this evening, uh, as well as finishing off a, uh, a little sample, a two ounce sample of Parker's Heritage Heavy Char uh, Eight Year Rye that uh, was sent to me by a viewer of the channel. Thank you, Keith. Uh, so I finished that off, been working on some 1910 as well. And I've been thinking a lot about trying to get you know those rare hard to find bourbons those of you who are probably watching this channel are something that we all deal with right trying to find those hard to find bottles you know in thinking about the this video and what i was going to talk about tonight I, I decided instead of doing a blind tasting or something like that i'm going to go a little bit different way and we're going to cover 12 tips to be a better bourbon hunter i think there's things that we can all do to increase the chances of us finding that rare special bottle uh, finding that bottle we love. But before we get into it, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Follow us on Instagram. If you want to support the channel, check us out on patreon.com slash whiskey row. So the first tip tonight is to know the calendar. Distilleries, bottlers, they follow a fairly standard schedule and they release things at similar times every year. And a lot of times they announce ahead of time what those releases are. The best resource uh, that I know of to find out what is coming out is a website called Breaking Bourbon. And I will tell you, they do a great job of keeping uh, their readers up to date. What the next release is, what's happening in February, what's happening in March. F go to Breaking Bourbon. It's the best resource of, that I know of to find the release schedule, to know when things are happening. If something gets delayed and it becomes publicly public knowledge, they update the website with that information. They really, really are good at keeping everything up to date. So tip two is find liquor store buddies. And what I'm saying by that is go to your liquor, your local liquor store, meet some people, meet the manager, meet the owner, whatever the case may be, get to know the employees, talk to them. They know when things are coming out in a lot of cases. They know when the next truck's coming. And if you treat them like people, you be respectful, you be friendly, you know, obviously you don't want to like act like you're using them because you need to build a relationship with somebody. It's not just about what they're going to do for you. It's about what you can do for them. And so in a lot of cases, they're trying to find bottles. I know here in Virginia, the ABC store employees aren't allowed to buy anything inventoried until it's been on the shelves for four hours, which means they have a horrible time finding rare stuff. So if you end up getting something that you don't care about that much of, and maybe you could trade it back to them, to one of the employees, because they didn't get a chance to get it because they're an employee. Build those relationships with the, with the local liquor stores around you. Work with them and build that relationship so that you will, one, have another friend, and two, you have a good contact who can help you and you can help them in some way in return. The next tip is to follow the industry on social media. Bottlers, retailers, distilleries post information about what's happening. They'll post that they're about to start bottling a certain special bottle. They're going to post when their next um, lottery entry is. Here in Virginia, the Virginia ABC system, I get a notification from Spirited Virginia, which is the official newsletter of the Virginia ABC organization. I get an email from them whenever a lottery is about to occur. Usually it comes on a Monday and the lottery starts on Wednesday. And they, they tell me all the details about the lottery, so I know when a lottery is happening. So get on those email lists, get on social media, follow them, see what they're doing. One is it's going to tie you into kind of trends and, and changes in the industry, which can clue you in on what, what bottles are going to be doing well, what bottles may not be. Whatever is happening, it'll help clue you in if you follow them on social media. Now, my next tip is play the lotteries. I know the odds aren't good. I know here in Virginia, we just had a lottery for four different rare bottles. And am I going to win one? I'll find out in a couple weeks, but most likely the answer is no, and that's okay. Odds are not in my favor. It's important to try. Somebody's going to end up winning that bottle, those special bottles. You know, last month, I believe it was in April, we had uh, several Pappy Van Winkles. We had several Old Rip Van Winkles come on the ABC lottery, and I didn't win any of them, but you know what? Someone did. There were 160 bottles in some cases, and somebody got those bottles. So right now here in Virginia, there's 150 people drinking Pappy Van Winkle 15 because they won the lottery. Maybe it wasn't 150. I don't remember what the number was, but you know what I'm saying. Somebody's drinking it. It's not me. I'm drinking the Old Forester 1910 tonight. My next tip is to go on the road. In Virginia, we have very uniform distribution uh, between regions, and you're not going to find anything particularly special outside of 
you know, your local five or six ABC stores, that's going to be very similar to the next five or six ABC stores, you know, 15 miles down the road. Where you're going to find success, though, is in crossing state boundaries, right? So for me in, for, in Virginia, I can head up into D.C., I can head up into Maryland, Pennsylvania, head down to North Carolina, and one, they get different product. Two, the pricing is different. Honestly, I've had such good luck in heading out of state. I've had some amazing store picks down in North Carolina, up in Maryland. I've had some great buys, some great finds that I've been very, very happy with. And I've seen bottles that I have never see on the shelves here in Virginia. Now, they were marked up beyond belief and I couldn't buy them, but I actually got to see them. And that was kind of cool to me because I had never seen them in person. But if you travel for business, hit up the local stores wherever you're heading. And if you find any special bottles, figure out a way to get them home. When I was in Oregon, I was able to get four bottles and to get them back here to Virginia. And I am currently enjoying those bottles. So uh, travel and use your trips to hunt for bourbon. My next tip is to find or build a bourbon network. Get on Facebook groups, join a bourbon club, whatever it might be. But one of the best parts about building a bourbon network is that you can exchange samples of things. So um, for example, I, I know a, a buddy uh, I have up in New York State, and he is so gracious in sending samples just so that people can try different stuff. And then well, once you had a sample, you're like, okay, well, this was pretty good, but it's not worth me hunting or me paying, you know, two times retail for, for this particular bottle. Maybe it is, though. By getting some of these samples and trading, and maybe I'll send him some things to try, and we just exchange these things, and, and then all of a sudden now we, we're so much better educated on what we should go after. The bigger the network, the better. And I don't mean bigger uh, by the number of people, which I'm sure that helps. I'm talking about bigger as in more geographically diverse. Because what they get down in Texas is different than Virginia, which is different than New York, which is different than Minnesota or Michigan or whatever. And so having a geographically diverse group allows you to actually get your hands on regional bourbons or harder to find bourbons. Now, my next tip is to find a good whiskey bar. Now, y'all know that I like to, when I'm traveling, to go to different whiskey bars to pay for, you know, one ounce, one and a half ounce, two ounce sample pours of rare or hard to find bottles that I haven't been able to get a hold of because it lets me try them. It's the same concept as, as that network where you're sending samples to each other so you can try different things. This is basically, I'm going to a bar and I'm paying for you know $20, $30, $50, $70 for a, a sample of a particular bourbon to see how special it is. Some stuff I've had that are samples have been incredibly impressive. The George T. Stag, oh my gosh, that was just out of the park. Every time I have George T. Stag, I'm just amazed at how delicious it is. Then I've had Pappy and um, it was good. <laughs> I mean, it was it was fine. It's good, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on it. But at the same time, you know, if I ever get a bottle at retail, oh, I'll buy it all day long. Am I gonna pay after market prices for it? Heck no, never. But I was able to taste the 15 year Pappy in New York. And so now I can say, okay, that was good. I liked it. I'm not gonna chase it, but now I'm gonna chase a George T. Stag. I'll pay, I'll pay more for a George T. Stag than I'd pay for a, a Pappy, but that's just me. Your mileage may vary. But my point is, is use these whiskey bars as a an avenue to taste, sample, and learn about the flavors of the stuff that you're thinking about chasing or thinking about dropping big dollars on. And then maybe you will spend that money or maybe it's not really worth it to you. You know, you have a limited amount of time and you have a limited amount of budget to buy this stuff. So spend your money on flavors and product that you love, that you're going to enjoy. And if you've tried it at a whiskey bar, you've tried it a sample from somewhere else, then you're going to know if you really like it or not. So my next tip is to join a bourbon club. There's bourbon clubs all over the place from state to state, city to city. There's different bourbon clubs. And I'll tell you, they work together. If you have 50 eyes or 100 eyes looking for product and they're tipping you off, tipping off the club on when something comes out or this store around here may have this product on this date, you're going to have an edge up, whether it's a dedicated bourbon club or it's a uh, Facebook group or it's a some sort of social media club or it's the Whiskey Row Discord server, whatever it might be, it's a great place to to talk to people and explore different bourbons and share and, and talk about taste and everything. Anyway, bourbon clubs are awesome, so check them out if you haven't. Now, my next tip in becoming a better bourbon hunter is to go to bad parts of a town or go to college towns. Now, college towns and the bad part of town have two similarities. One is 
people tend to not pay for expensive liquor. So if you live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, go to the bad part of Fort Lauderdale and explore some of the liquor stores there, some of the mop and pop, mom and pop shops, whatever they are, check them out. Obviously be safe and make good decisions, whatever else, but check those stores out because a lot of times they have stuff sitting around and their normal clientele are not spending big dollars on liquor. They're buying the middle or bottom shelf stuff. It's the same with college towns. I've heard great things about heading to a college town and hitting up the liquor stores. The college kids, they're not spending the money on the 80, 100, $200 bottles of bourbon. They're buying the $20 vodkas and the $25 bourbons. That is an opportunity by going to these places where it's economically not a situation where most people are buying expensive bourbons. Just go check them out. Now, my next tip is to realize that when you go to a store, it, and if it's not, if the store is not price regulated by the state, but if you go to some of these shops that have these high market prices, when you see those prices, you know, think about it. And obviously, if you want to just buy it, buy it. But if it's too high, if, it's, if the price is too high, then you're willing to pay. Come up with a number that you would be willing to pay that's reasonable based on the price of the bottle. Now, if they've got a, a Buffalo Trace antique collection bottle of some kind and they're asking $1,200 for it or $1,500 for it, and your best offer on that bottle is $250, don't waste the store's time. But if there's that special bottle and you're willing to go up there, but not quite there, so maybe for that uh, antique collection bottle, instead of $1,200, maybe you're willing to pay $900 for that bottle. Leave your contact info with the store clerk or the store manager and just leave. Leave the information with the store. Sometimes that bottle has been sitting there for a long time and they want to move that bottle. And if they know they have a sale, and they can turn an $800 profit. Well, maybe they're in a cash crunch for some reason and they could use that money for payroll or for some other store, some other purpose. So my point is, if you can come up with a reasonable offer for some of these special bottles, and, and I mean reasonable, always that's always an option to keep on the table. Now, my next tip is that hunting never ends. It happens year round. Things are always coming out. Even if that special bottle that you wanted came out, and now it's you didn't get it. You were on the store list. You were on the on the contact sheet or the email distribution list for this for this particular bottle. And for some reason you didn't get it. Well, two or three weeks go by. Reach out to the store again and say, Hey, do you still have any of those? Because a lot of times what happens is stores will reach out to the people who signed up to the winners of the lotteries, whatever it may be. And then that, those winners have a certain amount of time to get back to the store and buy the bottle. Sometimes that doesn't happen. There's a couple of things that can happen. One is the distributor for that store actually was able to get a hold of some extra. They came in, they found a case that had sat on a truck and didn't get just passed out, or somebody didn't pick something up from the store. Uh, I went up to meet a, 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 a subscriber to the channel, Sean, and we went to a couple different stores. He was showing me some stores up on uh, just uh, south of Gettysburg up in Maryland. As we were going store to store to store, the last store we went to together, there was a Jack Daniel single barrel, barrel proof rye. And sitting over on the shelf in the corner behind the register was one bottle. Well, what did Sean do? Well, Sean, so much quicker than I am on the on the pickup, just asked the cash register lady, he just said, hey, can I leave my name and number? And if nobody wants that bottle, if that bottle's not earmarked for somebody else, can I can I come back and buy it? And the lady said, sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll take your contact info and talk to the owner or whatever. Uh, Sean and I say goodbye. We go our separate ways. He's heading back up to Pennsylvania. I'm heading to, back to Virginia. And about 45 minutes into my drive, I get a message from Sean. He had gotten contacted by the store to come back and buy that bottle. And he was on his way back and they said they'd hold it for him. My last tip in being a better bourbon hunter is to be kind and to be polite. I can't stress this enough. Liquor store workers, liquor store owners, other bourbon hunters, we're all in this together. Be polite to people. Sometimes, you know what? It sucks. You get to the store and you're, there's three bottles of Michter's Tin or there's three bottles of Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye or whatever it is and you're fourth in line. Well, that sucks. I've been there. We've all been there. Be kind and polite to each other and be kind and polite to the store employees and it makes it a better experience for everybody because... Honestly, at least all of us that are on the hunting side, we're doing it because we love it, but we all love it the same. Anyway, those are my 12 tips to become a better bourbon hunter. 
And if you follow those tips, even some of them, it'll increase the chances of you finding that special bottle. So find that bottle that you love, whether it's a very hard to find allocated bottle or whether it's something very, very common and easy to get, but still very delicious. Get out there and find those things that you want. Hunt those bottles, create those bourbon and whiskey experiences that we all talk about. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Please follow us on uh, Instagram and check us out on patreon.com slash whiskey row. And until next time, find a bottle you love.